We are here with Commander CEDH content creators, Play to Win, and we are here to dissect three different Yu-Gi-Oh! archetypes to see which one is good right now, which one used to be good but is not anymore, and which one was never good. How's it going, everyone? Who, who are you guys? What do you do? Hello! We are Play to Win. I'm Dylan. This is Cam. Hello, I'm Cam. We make CDH content, high power commander for Magic the Gathering. We play a lot of Magic and not a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so this can only go great, right? Right, definitely right, yes. And that is the plan, to get someone as least versed in Yu-Gi-Oh as possible, to where we have a clean slate. Okay, we're going to give you some cards, and you're going to have no idea what you're looking at. You're going to read a lot, because Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of words. But first, I'm going to do a quick shout-out of Advanced GG. I'm drinking their Maui flavor right now, which is amazing. So if you want to get a discount 10% off, use my code JAME down in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started with the first archetype. Are you ready, guys? Ready. Let's do this. You've only watched the anime. Have you played any of the game? Yeah, watched a little bit of the anime. I played when I was younger. I got to the point where I realized that four-star monsters that are 1,800 power higher, that's good. And then I kind of stopped playing after that. So I know no strategy, but I have been in uh, card game adjacent groups for a long time. So I've had Yu-Gi-Oh! playing friends, and I've overheard things, and I have a rough idea of certain cards, iconic ones being too strong. But outside of that, I have no real knowledge of like the metagame or what's going on in Yu-Gi-Oh! in the past 15 years. I'm in the same boat. If you ask me anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! after 2003, I will have a lot of struggling to do. Um, but I do know the anime a little bit. I saw the movie in theaters, actually. And um, I had one of the Game Boy Advance games, too. So I know a couple things, but we'll see how far I can go. Hold on. You have more experience, okay, than Dylan. So I'm going... You can't lean on him, okay, Dylan? You can't lean on him. You're, you're <laughs> against each other. You can't work together. We are, they are friend, they're once friends, but now enemies. Let's go ahead and get started with the first card in the first archetype. All right. Uh, Harpy Lady, I think it's a light monster. Is Or no, Wind. I don't think that Wind is relevant. Four stars, Winged Beast, Vanilla. I think this is Flavor Text. This human-shaped animal with wings is beautiful to watch, but daily in battle, that doesn't sound like anything. 1,300 attack, 1,400 defense. I feel like I, I actually I like know this. I actually know this card. This was from the anime. This was a My Valentine card, right? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I said. I said if, if you if you're on Patreon and you get to see this entire video in the in its entirety, I say that we we might do some callbacks to like what you might have seen in the anime. So this is yeah, the first. This card. This is definitely familiar. Oh yeah, this is familiar. The Harpy Lady. Okay, now this is a vanilla. What we call a vanilla. Thirteen hundred attack, fourteen hundred defense. Now. But, um, there's nothing else to know about this card besides it's a wing beast and a wind, and that will actually matter when we go to the next card, the next few cards. Let's go ahead and go to the next card. Are you ready? I'm ready. So far, I think All this set. one's not good, though. There, there is, there is no one, there is no analysis to do with a vanilla monster. Okay, but it will make sense as the cards go along. <laughs> Understood. All right, Cam, you read this one. Oh, Harpy Lady Sisters. This is another wind monster that's six stars, level six. It's a winged beast with an effect that says it cannot be normal summoned or set. It must first be special summoned with Elegant Egotist. I remember as a kid thinking this card was extremely badass. I mean, it looked <laughs> awesome, but I, I, I don't think it's actually any good because you have to find a specific card to get into play and then it doesn't do anything besides just being stats that probably are not ideal, but right, and it's a harpy lady so it's in the same category archetype we talked right. about this these are in the same these are the same things okay right yeah. and, and, and i'm not going to show you elegant egotist today but it basically just said to summon a harpy lady sister it's all that elegant okay egotist that's, that's all it does it doesn't yeah. do anything yeah else. no no okay all right now Kim, what do you think so far this one yeah yeah it, it's <laughs> a, yeah go ahead, go ahead Cam, have, yeah do you still have to sacrifice a, a monster even though you're summoning it with elegant egotist no Oh, oh, well then this seems this this seems a lot better than I thought that it was initially then. Okay. Okay. One monster a turn? That. Is it one monster a turn, right? You can you can only normal summon one monster per turn, but you can special summon unlimited amounts of times per turn. Okay, which is why special summoning is probably good, I'm going to guess hmm. sometimes. Okay, oh, yeah. well, it's, it's, it's I think I might know where that card's going, but I want to see the third one before I officially yeah, decide. Yeah, Elegant Egotist is basically just summon a Harpy Lady or Harpy Lady Sisters from your deck, but you have to control you have to control a Harpy Lady or your opponent has to control a Harpy Lady. 
Uh, oh, so you do have to control the Harpy Lady. So it is you have to have two cards to play it and then get it out. Yes, but you but, can get it out from your deck? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so either you or your opponent has to control a Harpy Lady, and then you summon a Harpy Lady's sisters or another Harpy Lady from your deck. Okay. So Harpy Lady isn't just Harpy Lady. There's a bunch of different kinds of Harpy Ladies, but the original vanilla Harpy Lady is the one that I showed you. Right, okay. I see. Oh, okay. I'm sure that goes real deep then. Okay. It goes pretty deep, yeah. Whoa, that's so <laughs> many words. Okay. Holy Har cow. <clears throat> Harpy Lady Phoenix Formation. Can I ask real quick, the, the thing on the right, the, what does it say? A Apple? What does that say? Wind? Oh, that, that says blue, spell. Blue. It's, it's, it, it means it's a spell just card. Spell. It's okay, an just Apple spell. card. Okay. Apples and pears. Is it an apple? Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. And next so it's up, we have card. banana cards. Yeah. <laughs> Harpy Lady <laughs> Phoenix Formation. If you control three or more Harpy Lady and or Harpy Lady Sisters, target as many monsters as your opponent controls as possible, but not more than the total number of Harpy Lady and Harpy Lady Sisters you control. Destroy those targets. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the highest original attack among those destroyed monsters. Your choice if tied. You cannot special summon monsters from the main deck or extra deck, nor conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card. This seems good. The effect seems good. I don't know if controlling three or more Harpy Ladies is doable, but that effect seems really good. Like, if you uh, have, like... I think I know... Do I think you know? I know my answer for all three categories here. Oh, okay. Um... Um, I'm gonna say once because I think um I don't know should I say what I'm thinking about this harpy uh harpy well, Lady Phoenix transformation well, uh, one of the archetypes is gonna be one of the entire archetypes is gonna be um like once good once no once good no longer good and stuff like that it's not in each of these individual cards this is just a part of the harpy, oh, harpy okay. Lady archetype. I see. Oh, okay, so I we're see. we're gonna decide at the end of this is if Harpy Lady was ever good, was now good, or was once good. Correct. Okay, not individual cards. Correct. Okay, understood. I see. The okay, individual okay. cards are giving you the context of what how you how good you think the Harpy Lady archetype is. Okay, so oh, nice. to me, okay. this effect seems really wrong. powerful, but only if the metagame means that there's a lot of monsters in play. I don't know what Yu-Gi-Oh actually looks like. So like if Yu-Gi-Oh exists that like, there's like a bunch of monsters in play and this can potentially like destroy all of them as well as dealing damage to your opponent, that feels like a uh, like a two for one. Like you only use one of your cards and you get rid of several of theirs plus you deal damage to them which is probably your goal to kill them. But I don't I feel like I don't really know Yu-Gi-Oh. From what I've heard, Yu-Gi-Oh is like a storm format. Like you're just you're you're it's like a combo you so i don't know if this is going to be relevant does it matter that you're killing your opponent's monsters like did they already do their job because they entered and it doesn't matter if you get rid of them anymore i'm not sure about that but the effect seems strong yeah i feel like it's really good if you're in like a stalled out board but i also feel like this could just be more of a win more because if i have like two harpy ladies and a harpy lady sister i'm probably doing pretty well and yeah, i can like harpy lady sisters seems I don't know. I think Harpy Lady Sister seems really busted. Like, being able to play Harpy Lady and then go Ego and, like, get that out right away all on turn one. Like, that will prevent your opponent's four-star mm -hmm. monster that they have on their turn one from really doing anything. So, I think in terms of speed, the Harpy Lady Sisters has a lot of potential to really help you power out quickly. So, I just don't know how easy it is to get three Harpy Ladies, though. Yeah. That's my question. How easy is it to get three Yeah, you do only Harpy get one ladies. normal summon per turn of a level of, of any of any monster, whether it's level four or higher. Right. If it's level five or six, you have to tribute a monster, like Summon Skull, to summon it. And yep. if it's level seven or higher, you have to tribute two monsters, like Dark Magician or Boys by Dragon. Uh, so, in that case, in order to get three monsters on the field, you kind of have to figure, on turn one, you have to figure out a way to, like, special summon them. And there are definitely cards and ways to special summon extra monsters um that i haven't showed you yet but i will tell you that since you said that it's more of like a storm game or whatever it's kind of storm but if storm cards were creatures like it, okay. it's basically so, like a so monster centric storm is what like Yu Gi Oh is right now okay so so can, i guess can you tell me like the monsters being in play they're relevant they're worth killing a lot of the time like yes. you want to kill your opponent's creatures Car and stuff? monsters are worth killing okay monsters knowing monsters are worth killing i think this card is good I'm gonna I'll, I'll think, lock that in. I think it's strong, but I think there's a chance this card could be a win more. So I, yeah. I don't know. I okay. think it is powerful. I guess it we'll also see. depends on how good harpies are. Because if you have to fill your deck full of bad cards, then maybe this card's not good. If the harpies, that's are. the other thing. I kind of want to see what the rest of these cards are. But so okay. far, yeah. I think harpies could be pretty strong. Okay, let's go ahead and and go on to the next card. It's a different type of card. 
This one's a trap card. Trap card. A trap card. Harpy's Feather Storm. Okay, this is a trap. If you control a wind winged beast monster until end of turn this turn, negate any no negate any monster effects your opponent activates. If you control a harpy monster, you can activate this card from your hand. If this card is in its owner's spell and trap zone, it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect. You can't add one harpy's feather duster. From your deck or graveyard to your hand. I remember Harpy's Feather Duster does something like destroying all artifact. No, all um magic and trap cards, or at least a magic and trap card. So I remember that being good. So a card that can tutor that for you seems pretty good. All right, what do, what yeah, do you what think do you think, it, Dylan? I don't. Again, I don't know how good uh, negating the effect of monsters. We talked about monsters being pretty good right now. So this seems pretty powerful. And the fact that you don't have to put it in play. So if you just have the Harpy, you don't have to reveal it. And the fact that it, it says if it's destroyed while it's in this trap zone, you can add a Harpy from your deck to your hand or your graveyard to your hand. So that leads me to believe that like that's something that can happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! Whereas like, you can destroy your opponent's face down trap cards before they get a chance. So kind of you like concealing that. that information. Concealing that information seems like it'd be good. So you don't have to like lay it out there and right. like it's kind of it's like a free counter spell almost is what it feels like like force of will or it's a it's like a it, it feels good to me this feels like yeah, it, it, this feels good you, you can hold back information you can stop something relevant this is basically like a dress down because this effect yes won't exactly last it's like dress down that's the end of turn so this is kind of like a dress down so i'm gonna say that this card seems really good and uh is a really yeah. good tool to have because dress down is a really good tool to have in cedh <laughs> so yeah. i think by I, that logic and even has Great. like a possibility to kind of replace itself, or if it gets destroyed, you get to go get another harpies. So that seems like a something. So yeah, I think I yeah, think and feather good. duster is a disenchant basically. So I think but that's also, pretty good as but well. But also, are harpies still good in Yu-Gi-Oh in 2024? I don't know. I feel like I don't know. Let's see the fifth card. Maybe. Well, we'll see the last. <laughs> We're gonna card. find out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this card I know, right? Harpies feather duster destroy all spells and traps your opponents control. This card's got to be good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, this card's great. There's no mana cost either, so you can just do this for free, wipe them all out, yeah. and then do your stuff. Yep. This card seems busted to me, but I still don't know that Harpies themselves are good because all of these other good cards rely on you having to have these little things in play and having... Would you play Harpy Lady, like a, a 1,300, like nothing, just for it to like turn on your... Maybe it turning on the other things makes it good, and it doesn't matter that it's just free, so it doesn't matter. I don't know. By I'm free, thinking I mean, of it like great. scam, like scam in modern right now, where like you right. are able to basically for three cards put yourself in an incredibly game winning position. And I think harpies seem like it's the same thing, where instead of stripping away two of your opponent's cards, you're using like harpy lady and that uh, elegant egotist to be able to get out like just two monsters really quickly in play and then just ride them to victory. Do we have to announce which one we think is which before we hear all of the archetypes? Because I have a, I have a, a gut, like a feeling about this, but I don't know if okay, we, we should see the other ones first. Let, let's announce what you think it will be right now and then see if you change your mind at the end. Kim, you go first because I know what I'm going to pick for this one. All right. I'm going to say that Harpies were once good. Yeah, we're going against each other, but I also think Harpies were probably once good. It seems like something that would be good in the beginning of a format or when some when something hasn't gotten too complex. And I know Yu-Gi-Oh! has gotten very complex. So I want to say there's probably more broken things you can do at this point. But to me, looking at like card games, this seems like, like you said, like it's like a scam thing. It seems like something that might be good at the beginning of a format or I don't know. Yeah, I think it was once good. Okay, let's I go. I think... Uh... I think the last thing I want to say to support my argument is that this is something, these are all cards that I know from like the conception of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is when it tended to be more busted with like pot of greed and stuff being around in the format. So I don't know. I would assume that if it didn't get the same amount of support up through 2024, it definitely wouldn't have held its strength. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a great point to make. Now let's go ahead and go to the second archetype. Ooh, Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind. This is a three-star dark monster. It's got 13 attack, uh, 1300 attack and 14 and 400 defense. It's a wing beast tuner effect. If you control a Blackwing monster other than Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind, you can special summon this card from your hand 
Once per turn, you can target one face-up monster your opponent's controls. That targets that targets attack and defense become half of its current attack and defense. Mm. Whoa. So this feels potentially I don't I don't know. Well, so this it's like, like it's a combat trick on a creature, it looks like almost. Can you play this at instant speed? Can you no. play this anytime or is it no, okay. In, in, so in you Yu-Gi-Oh, have to... Yu-Gi-Oh is the opposite of magic. In magic, you can use any ability at instant speed if, unless it says you can use it as a sorcery. Yu-Gi-Oh is literally the opposite. Everything's a sorcery unless it says it's quick effect, which means it's an instant. Quick effect. Okay. What is? Do you know what tuner means? Can you tell us what tuner means? Tuner, is that relevant tuner yet? Means, yeah, I can tell you. Tuner means that it is a part of a, of a summoning condition of a synchro monster. Um, you have a, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh oh. is a 15-card extra deck, which is a, you know, a 15-card... So it, um, kind of like a companion zone where you yeah. have these cards that are always available to you and if you meet the requirements to summon them you can summon one so let's say you have a level three three stars blackwing gale the whirlwind and then you have a level three other blackwing that's not a tuner like one tuner one non-tuner you can put those into the graveyard just put them in the graveyard and then summon your synchro monster from your extra deck okay are the synchro ones the white ones yes with white border Okay, I've and, seen those, oh, but I don't. Okay. I I didn't know what uh, what else besides that. So being able to special summon an extra one of these, it's like an extra free creature, which seems good if you want to like build up a bunch of these in board quickly. That seems powerful. Having your opponent's creature, like having that attacker defense, I guess that's good. Like you have to get rid of your opponent's monsters to deal damage to them in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? So like being able to attack through them seems good, especially when these black wings seem like they're not very powerful. So you kind of like have to weaken your opponents. So. I think this might be good. I have to see what the rest of them are, I guess. Yeah, this definitely seems pretty good. I think the attack and defense thing is really strong. And um, like like Dylan said, I, that's really how you are going to be able to win the game, is just being able to take out your opponent's creatures. So this helping you do that, I think, is going to be pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and go to the second card. Okay, Black Whirlwing spell card with an infinity sign next to it. Do all the spell cards have infinity signs? No, the spell cards that don't have the okay. infinity sign are like normal spell cards, like you saw Harpy's Feather Duster before. That is a normal spell yeah. that's exactly like a sorcery. This continuous spell is more akin to like an artifact or enchantment. It stays on the board once you... Oh, but it is a sorcery speed card that you play because it doesn't have flash or anything. Got it. When a Blackwing monster is normal summoned to your field, you can add one Blackwing monster from your deck to your hand with less this attack than that monster. Wait a minute. This yeah, okay. With Holy less attack cow. than that monster. So you have to get, there has to be another one that you can get. But even already with the first, hold on, I'm, I'm smelling like a, smelling a thing here. So if you control a <laughs> Blackwing monster, you can special summon this card once per turn. So if you get, there's probably like another Blackwing that's bigger than this one. If you can get that one out first, then you can, uh, well, I guess. I guess you play this, then you play the other Blackwing, and then you get this Blackwing that allows you to play that one in right away. Right, like, okay. like in um, theory, yeah, you could you summon... Can... There's a bunch of Blackwings. There's just, like, not enough. There's, like, so many that I can't show you all of them. Um, okay. I'm only showing you five cards from each other. Ones... But there's a billion Blackwing monsters um, that, that are different, that do slightly different things, okay? Um, just like, just like Gale the Whirlwind. Just like Gale the Whirlwind can have your opponent's attack, and it's a tuner, it can special summon itself. Uh, uh, other Blackwings do different things. But let's say you can you normal summon a black wing. You have you activate black whirlwind, and then you normal summon a monster with over thirteen hundred attack. That's a black wing. Yeah. And then you can say trigger black whirlwind, and then you get to search gale the whirlwind, and then you can then special summon right gale the whirlwind immediately. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like yeah, that that's kind of like what really black wings good. want to do. Yeah, that seems good, right? Getting two bodies in play turn one seems good. I think this seems better than good? what the harpies were trying to do because this is like a harpy lady, but has another effect. It's kind of like the opposite, where you need like a small creature to get the big harpy. This is like you need you can get a big creature can get you a smaller creature. Then yeah, it does seem similar. The same same type of ideas to get two bodies in play early on, right? Yeah, but so far I think this is more powerful than the harpies. Right, and, okay. and notice this. Notice this is not once per turn. Oh oh, huh. So if you if you have the ability, you can, oh, okay, you can you can have their attack once per turn. But if you have another one, you can just jam another one. Um, yes, like like Black Rowan only works when you normal summon something, and you usually only get one normal summon per turn. But if you have an effect that lets you normal summon again, you can trigger this again. Oh, this is nutty. Yeah, this card okay. is absolutely. We got to see some more cards. I think. But yeah, we, yeah, we got to see some more cards. Yeah, for sure. This seems like a maybe a like what Cam said, stronger version of the Harpy Ladies, maybe. All right, let's go ahead and 
see the next one. Blackwing Gofu the Vague Shadow is a dark five level monster. Its attack and defense are both zero. This is so a... many words. This is ridiculous. It's got to be so good. many, right? Watch. Oh, geez. Winged Beast Tuner effect cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned from your hand while you control no monsters. When this card is special summoned from your hand, you can special summon two vague shadow tokens, Winged Beast type. Dark level one attack zero defense zero, but they cannot be tributed or be used as synchro material. You can banish this card and one or more face up non tuners you control, then select one black wing synchro monster in your graveyard whose level is equal to the total levels the banished <laughs> monsters had on the field. Special summon it, and if you do, treat it as a tuner. Oh my god, yeah, uh, this holy is cow. <laughs> All right, so this thing this thing seems really good, right? This is a way this, to get your really powerful synchro monster out from the graveyard, right? Like it's just a a um what's the name of the five mana golem that makes a three three and then makes two more three three tokens in MTG? Oh, I, I, and oh, then I when know. you target one, they all die. Yes, that's the card I'm thinking. Okay, of. Like, I don't know I the name like of that card, like but uh, but I know that it came out rec it, it got reprinted recently, so. I forgot the name of it. Yeah, Something I feel like when, when you special summon this card, it's like one of that. And then you can use that to reanimate your synchro monster. And I'm just assuming that the wing beast synchro monster is pretty good. So How do you get the, the wing the, synchro monster in your graveyard, though? Uh, well, someone kills it. Uh, that's the first way. <laughs> or maybe there's another card that is like an entomb, like a black wing entomb. And then you can reanimate it with well, this Gofu. Synchro monsters don't go in your main deck. They're always in the extra deck. And you can only reanimate synchro monsters and just cards in your extra deck in general if they were summoned successfully the first time. So you would not be able to reanimate an entombed synchro monster. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. okay. See, this feels kind of like the card Scapegoat from like a long time ago. I don't know if it actually is because the extra bodies that you can't get, you can't use them to tribute or synchro. So all they can do is just like soak up attacks, I think, right? Well, is that what I'm getting? Th there are different summoning mechanics from your extra deck. One is Link oh. Monsters that you can use the tokens for. Oh, and then it's it's allowed for that specific thing. Oh, okay. Then that's probably really mm. good if you can use this one card to get a really powerful card that normally expects three cards for it. This then that might be really good. Okay, so yeah, it's like a recursion effect and also potentially get something big out of your synchro deck. I feel like I have to know what the thing it gets is, but I yes. want to say if the thing it gets is really good, I want to say that this is great. Okay, there is a reason that I only showed this many black wing monsters that go in your deck because I wanted to show you two synchro monsters that you could potentially make in the black wing archetype that okay. can give you like a, a more of an idea of kind of like the boss monsters that this deck can make. Okay. I see. Okay. All right. I like that. All right. You remember when I said that Black Whirlwind can, can trigger more than once per turn if you have an additional normal summon? Yes. Read this Which, card. To me, that's a special summon, but... Whoa. Cool. Okay. Black Wing. Whoa. Nothing? Nothung? How do you say that? Nothung? Uh, nothung. Nothung. He's not hung. <laughs> no, right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And also Black not, not nothing. Hung. Yeah. Black Wing yeah. not hung the starlight. <laughs> He's a winged synchro effect. He's six stars, dark type. One tuner plus one or more non-tuner monsters. <clears throat> 2,400 attack, 1,600 defense. That part doesn't seem that crazy. But if this card is special summoned, inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Well, okay, that's probably good. Then one face-up monster your opponent control loses 800 attack and defense. That's also maybe good. You can only use this effect if Blackwing not hung the starlight once per turn. During your main phase, you can normal summon one black wing monster in addition to your normal summoner set. I see. You can gain this effect only once per turn. To me, an extra normal summon, that's something special about that. That should be a special summon, but that's not for me to judge. Uh, <laughs> extra normal summons. Okay. This feels like a deck that you can... Hold on. Let me, let me go back and real quick read some of these. Um, you can add one from your deck to your hand. So you're going in your deck. You're going in your deck a lot with this strategy. It right. feels like you're picking up your deck. You're finding something. You're putting it back. Your opponent cuts it, and you go. I'm just going to go back in again. I feel like that's the strategy with this. There, deck. There's Is actually a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh where people don't even cut each other's deck in modern Yu-Gi-Oh until <laughs> okay. they're like done searching. <laughs> that makes sense because I feel like you're going to go in your deck a hundred times. That seems like what you're doing in this Correct. deck, which seems really good. 
how many of this would it play? Would it play three of them? You can only gain, it says on that la very last line, you can only gain this effect once per turn. That is, you can literally only gain this effect once per turn. If you have another Black Wing not hung, not hung the Starlight, you wouldn't be able to gain that effect again. <laughs> But you could do it next turn. Right, if next turn, yeah. You, just, with, you're you could special summon yeah. a second one next yeah, turn. Yeah, you, 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 you can, in theory, you can, like, summon this, and then use your extra normal summon to normal summon another Blackwing monster. That would trigger your Black Whirlwind to search another monster. You can, in theory, like, special summon that monster you just did, and then you, and maybe it's a tuner, and then you can synchro the tuner and this not hung into something bigger. And then yeah. next turn, since your not hung's in the graveyard, you can, like, use the Gofu and, and a level one Blackwing monster to, like, banish them both, bring the not hung back, get another normal summon, make another thing. Like, there, there's just, like, different combos that you can do. By the amount that you know about this one, I'm going to say this one's got to be good right now, but <laughs> it does seem very powerful. <laughs> I know yeah. quite a bit yeah, about so Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. yeah, this one does seem like you're going to take a long turn. This I'm seeing the, the, the parts of a long turn with this deck. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I'm excited to see this last card in this archetype. All right, don't throw up when you see this because it's a lot of words. Oh, God. Cam, let me know if you want to throw it to me. <laughs> he saves them all for me. Ooh, this is an assault. This is so small. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. Why is it so many stars? How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That Jeez. is. What's the point of twelve stars? Is that anything more? Is like seven or twelve? Does that mean sacrifice more creatures or it, something? It, I mean, uh, synchros. To synchro something, anyway, you need but... to add the levels of the synchro materials to make twelve. Ah, oh, okay. So this is hard to get. Oh. Sorry, Cam. Go ahead. Like, like if you like if Holy you synchroed, okay. if you if you like if you had not hung in play and you had Gofu in play, it's level five, right? That's level. That's like twelve. That's like eleven stars. If you have another level one non tuner, you can put all three of them in the graveyard since they add up to twelve and summon Assault Blackwing, uh, Onomaru, the Divine Thunder from your extra deck. You can synchro summon as many times per turn. Also, yes, theoretically, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is Assault Blackwing, Anamaru, the Divine Thunder. It is a dark monster. What we say? This is 12, level 12 over here. <laughs> 3,000 attack, 2,000 defense, wing beast synchro effect uh, that costs one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. If this card is synchro summoned using the Blackwing monster as material, it is treated as a tuner while face-up on the field cannot be destroyed by card effects that's whoa nice. is that like you hexproof can... and indestructible can't is that indestructible can't be destroyed it is half it's of it's indestructible if you have an indestructible creature indestructible. in magic it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects this can be destroyed by effects. battle but it cannot Understood. be destroyed by a like a, a go for the throat okay. thank you sorry to interrupt cameron right. keep going you can target one Blackwing monster in your graveyard to have this card's level become the same as that monster's. You can use, you can only use this effect of Assault Blackwing Anamaru the Define Thunder. Better get the full card name in there. Once per <laughs> duel. Oh, once per duel. Oh, okay. If this card that was synchro summoned using only synchro monsters attacks. This card gains 3,000 attack during the damage step only. I have so many questions. Um, <laughs> As okay. do I. F uh, duel. Is a duel a game or is it like a match? Does a game. You, you have matches like it's a game. Okay. So like the, if there's like a sideboard game afterwards, you can do this again. Right. Okay. And in tournaments, are there, is it best of three normally? Yes. It is. Okay. Um... And it says it it has the same level as the card in the graveyard. Does that effect only apply when Assault Blackwing is already in play? Or, like, from the Synchro Zone, it can change its level? Uh, oh, you mean from the extra deck it changes the level? No, it's while it's in play. Yeah, yeah. it's while it's in play. So you can't, like, cast oh. this for no sacrificing right. by making its level that low small. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, that would be is banned. Is that good? Is making it... That would be so good, right? That would be broken, <laughs> right? I, yes, I want yes. like I understand enough about Yu-Gi-Oh to know that that would be way too good oh, if yeah, that were yeah. the case. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, this seems really good, right? It can't be destroyed by card effects. That seems really powerful. You can bring something back. Oh no! What is? The, I don't know what the reducing of the level actually does. I read it, but I couldn't really comprehend it. That would, it reduces two totally different things. It reduces its own level, but I don't know why having a small level once it's in play, I don't know what that means remember, or why that's remember good. Remember that it can become it, this card can become a tuner itself. So if you reduce the level, you can synchro this with another non-tuner to make another synchro monster. So you can reduce uh -huh. the level to kind of like mix match the levels that you want to make. Monsters together. 
Do you have to, when you synchro, does it have to be the exact level? Yes. Like it has to level. add up to exact. Oh, so you can't, because this one, it can't synchro into anything else because it's too big. Right. And sometimes you would want to synchro this into something else. Yeah, okay. there's no like, there's no like level um, 14 synchro monster. You know, this is like almost as big as you can get. So, and if this card was synchro summoned using only synchro monsters attacks, which I imagine in the deck that it's in, it's only going to be done with synchro monsters, right? Or no, I guess not necessarily, but that would be the goal. So that you can get 3,000 attack. That seems nuts. Attacking with a 6,000 power, uh, 6,000 attack monster seems extremely good. Yeah, 6,000 yeah. 6, is, this... is uh, what, three quarters of the life points? So that's like attacking with like a 15 power monster. Does trample exist in Yu-Gi-Oh? Normally, it doesn't uh, trample yes. through, right? If you attack right? over an attack position monster on your opponent's side of the field, um, it will trample over to your opponent's life. Oh, this card's good. It's got to be good. This card, I think, has got to be good. It has protection. Right. It kills your opponent's dead. I'm going to vote. I mean, well, I know we're against each other, Cam, but I think this card's good. I I know where I'm putting the black wings. I already know that. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay, where are you putting the black wings, Cam? Oh, they're definitely going in the currently good pile. All right, what, what about you, the Dylan? Scene. Where are you putting the black wings? I think they're currently good. I still have to see what the third one is, though, because if uh, we're going to laugh at ourselves when we see, like, the third one, and it's just, like, Pot of Greed, you're going to show me or something, and I'm going to go, this one's the good one, even though I think Pot of Greed is banned, so maybe that's a bad example. But if you show me something that's even more powerful than this, I'm going to eat my words. But I think this turn archetype is currently good. I think the Harpy ones was once good. So that means this next one would, would be never good, maybe, but I'm not sure if that's right. We'll see. I'm expected to see bad cards, but I'll be excited to see some good cards. All right. Well, you know what? Let me just show you. <laughs> this has got to be so hard for you, like knowing Yu-Gi-Oh! and watching people like confidently state their opinion on like how good cards are. And you're like, no, you're I don't so know. Wrong. Honestly, it's so fun because I play poker, so I can okay. just keep the I can just keep the poker face. I can just literally <laughs> not give you any hints at all. And, and, all right. and, 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 and in my head, I'm like, dude, these people are getting so wrong. <laughs> but yeah. I'm not going to say it out loud or anything. You know, I would never do that. Excuse me. Okay. Snake Eyes Poplar. This is a fire one star. One star is one level, not very high. Pyro effect. 700 attack, 200 defense. All right. If this card is added to your hand, except by drawing it, you can special summon this card. Oh, yeah. Man, these cards feel broken. This, this, if this card is normal or special summon, you can add one Snake Eye spell trap card from your deck to your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one fire monster in your graveyard, place it face up on its, you place it face up in its owner's spell or trap zone as a continuous spell. You can only use this effect of Snake Eye's Poplar once per turn. That's so many things. This card seems bonkers, right? Oh, man. We're, we're so, the harpies suck. The harpies were never the good. The harpies okay. suck. Yeah, well, let me hold up. Yeah, I have to move, I have to move the harpies get, around a little bit. I gotta, read this, I gotta read this one more time to fully understand what I'm looking at here. I'm sorry. So, if this card is added to your hand except by drawing it, so you have to do some other effect to get into your hand, you to do the rest of this stuff. You can special summon it right into play. So, if you have something that says, go get a snake eyes put in your hand, this card puts it right into play. At, you actually just put it right into play. If this card is normal summoned or special summoned, which is what you just did, right? Um, you can special summon. You can add one Snake Eyes spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. So if something says, go get a Snake Eyes creature, it actually says, go get a Snake Eye creature, put it into play, then also go get the Snake Eye trap card from your deck, put that into your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, so if they kill it or if you sacrifice it to make a bigger thing, you can target one fire monster in your graveyard, not this, probably something else, and place it face up in its owner's, your spell or trap zone as a continuous spell. I don't know. So it just continues to exist in play as a Snake Eyes. You can only use this effect of Snake Eyes popular once per turn. I think this card's got to be good. I think this card is... I Sorry, I had to like understand it for so long, but this card just it does too many things for me that it, it seems like it, it creates too many actions off of itself. It allows you to do go too far just off of one other card. You'll probably be able to chain two or three cards out of it, and I think you, card advantage in Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably precious. So using one card to go get this... Put it into play, which means you go get another thun, and then also when this dies, you get to put it back into play. That feels like that's like four cards in one, kind of. So I think good. Yeah, so far this seems like the start of the most busted archetype we've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on what you can go get, but um, I I can't imagine that this is bad. Like that'd be hilarious if if the, if the only thing this card could get would be like a freaking ham sandwich. <laughs> <Nothing>. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm giving you this one broken card to start off with, and everything else is awful. <laughs> no, all right. It, but this thing yeah. can definitely chain together all, all kinds of stuff. And, like, you can get other copies of itself back into play then with its own ability. I don't know. This seems busted. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't What's actually come card? back in play. Like, it comes back in play as a continuous as a continuous spell, right? But it doesn't have any ability, any mm. like monster effects. Like those would not apply while it's in the it spell. Just ex trap. It just it just adds to the amount of snake eye poplars you have in play. I imagine but like, for some like, other payoff. Technically, maybe? if a card says that like you can okay. send a card from your graveyard, like field to the graveyard, to like activate an ability, like you would be able to send th the card that this would put in your spell and trap card zone as part of the cost okay. to do that. And you, you'll see, you'll see. Okay. Let's, okay. let's go ahead and read the next card. All right, here we go. We got Snake Eye Ash. Let me zoom in. So Snake Eye Ash is another level one fire monster that has 800 attack and 1,000 defense. The pyro effect, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one level one fire monster from your deck to your hand. This also <laughs> seems crazy. If you send... Two face-up cards you control to the graveyard, including this card. You can special summon one Snake Eye monster from your hand or deck. Or deck. What? Except Snake Eye <laughs> Ash. Except for that card. You can okay. only use each effect of Snake Eye Ash once per turn. Yeah, this is nuts. Holy cow. This Tutor is a nuts, card right? from your deck into play? This is... This seems busted. And so, you yeah, you... get, like, the best thing. You go, you play Snake Eye Ash, you go get Snake Eye Poplar, and then Poplar says if it's gotten, you can just play it right away. And then you play the pop, the Poplar, and you go get maybe the next spell that you're going to show us, I'm not sure, but a Snake Eye Spell or Trap card and put that into your hand. So I'm seeing the chain here. And then this continues to chain in other ways. This seems really good. I mean, it's attack and defense. Do you players ever have the chance to put their deck down or to shuffle their <laughs> deck or anything like that? No, you just you, you basically just, just your, give your opponent your the deck, deck to cut hands. the deck afterwards, like after you're already done searching the 13 cards you're searching. Because it, it seems like it's yeah. just like your whole deck is just your whole deck becomes your hand. You just yes. get to play one card, get all the snake eyes from your deck into into play somehow. That's, that <laughs> that seems like what's going on. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and go on to maybe a spell or a trap card that you would go get. Woof. This is a lot of text, too. Original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. Okay, so this is something that you get. Spell card. Light. Is that what it is? Uh, send one other face-up card you control to the graveyard. Special summon one level one fire monster from your hand or deck. Oy. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one snake eye or... Diabell Star yep. monster in your graveyard and add one level one fire monster from your deck to your hand. Do you tutor twice? Well, hold on. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Okay. After you use the spell card, this isn't an infinity one, so it goes to your graveyard. Okay. Uh, from your deck to your hand. Then place the targeted monster on the bottom of the deck. Oh, you can only use one original sinful spoil snake eyes effect per turn and only once that turn. Woof, just let okay. you go get more snake eye ashes and more snake eye populars. Your brain like. has got to feel so big and full of curves when you're playing this deck, I imagine. Because I, I'm not exactly sure what the chain is, but it just seems like <laughs> at, there's like, do -do 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 -do. I'll do this, then do this. Then like, this is already, I can tell like the Yu-Gi-Oh deck that I stereotypically think of when I think of Yu-Gi-Oh players playing, where they just like say they're going to do actions and go into their deck 400 times and then they win the game. Um... I'm not saying that's a bad it? thing. I'm saying that's a cool thing, but this seems very combo. This feels full of combo. What is a Diabell Star monster? Yeah. You, yeah, you'll see. You'll see in a second. Let me show you the second to last oh, card okay. here. Wanted. Seeker oh. of Sinful Spoils. Oh, the, the guy that goes and does that last magic card. Okay. So this is a spell card, but it has a different symbol. This is a quick it. play spell card, which means that you have to set it first. Just... Like you have to set like if you wanted to use it on your opponent's turn, which you can, you have to set it first just like a trap card. Or you can use it at instant speed from your hand on your own turn. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Can I so ask a quick question? Go ahead. What's the difference between a spell card with a lightning bolt on it and a trap card then, besides the different types? Do they function the same outside can, of that? Um they they do the same thing as a trap card, like you have to set it first to use it on your opponent's turn. But the difference is you cannot play a trap card from your hand on your own turn. Oh, so you can't just play trap card face up right away, whereas no. this you could. So this is a little bit better than a trap card, kind of, just on like what it does. Right, unless it's the harpy card that says that you can activate it from your hand if you control a harpy. Got it. All right. Mm. 
All right, so this is add one Diabell Star monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. During your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one of your Sinful Spoil spell or trap cards that's banished or in your graveyard, except for this card, and then place it on the bottom of your deck. Then draw a card. You can only use the this effect uh, once per turn. I'm not sure what the bottom of the deck thing is about. Is that good or bad? Well, it's, because, putting... it's because all these cards lets you search your entire deck for them. So it doesn't matter that you're putting them on the bottom. You're still going to be able to go get it. It's just the fact that you put them back in so you can go get them again, basically. Yep. It seems like it. Yeah. Like this just lets you buy back. Like, so then that means that your original Sin for Spoils Snake Eye not only lets you do two things, but you can get it back with the Seeker of the Sinful Spoils and now do four things with it? That seems pretty <laughs> I, nuts. I, I still feel like I need a, a payoff. Like, what are we doing? Like, so far it seems like we can get a thousand Snake Eyes in play, but, like, then maybe and maybe that's not even... Maybe that's it. Maybe you just get, like, 10 or 15, <laughs> 700 attacking creatures and you say, that's good. I Can you beat 10, that many things in play right away? Like, what's the maybe payoff? How are we actually winning? Maybe was no good from the start. <laughs> 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 All the time, it just gets like, okay, I have 11 700 attack monsters. What is that? Do? Right, I'm, I'm thinking um, to myself, but... like, when will they actually get it? That that's the only thing you're getting is just a bunch of 800 attack <laughs> monsters. <laughs> oh man, well, I have no more cards in my deck, and yeah. Pass but even turn. still, like, that's, that's probably good. I'm gonna put in 20 monsters that have 800 attack, and I then that's that maybe well, that's good, right? One thing Next, is that you I only get. How... You only get five monster zones. You can only have five eight hundred attack monsters in play. Oh, yeah, so I don't. I don't. I think you just like see blue eyes, white dragon, and then just like scoop it up. Right? <laughs> You're like, how do I get yeah. over this thing? Okay, I didn't realize yeah. that you could only get five in play. I thought you could just keep on going. And if that's the case, okay. So I still think that these cards do seem good. This does seem powerful, but I still I'm kind of waiting to see like. A payoff or something before I like maybe definitively. Last card no, it. maybe okay. it'll be a payoff. Okay. You or don't have a last card yet. Bad. Okay, so I just got to show you the last card. <laughs> Who wants to read the freaking long text this time? We, uh, we got we got to give it to Dylan, you, right? Because yeah. I think I think Cam, you've I read would. every long text card so far. Yeah, <laughs> I'm exhausted. You need you yeah. need a, you need a break. All right. Oh man, this thing looks cool. All right, it's a Snake Eyes Dragon, so it better be the payoff. Snake oh, Eyes payoff. Flame Burge Dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stars. That looks like a fire type thing. Dragon effect, three thousand attack, twenty five hundred defense. This is a blue eyes baby. Snake Eyes, my ass. You can target <laughs> one face up monster on the field, or in either graveyard. Place it. Whoa, you place it face up on its owner's. Hold on. <clears throat> You can target one face-up monster on the field or in either graveyard. Place it face-up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can target one monster card, treat it as a continuous spell on the field, special summon it to the field. If this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you can special summon two level one fire monsters from your graveyard. You can only use... Each effect of Snake Eyes Flame Bridge Dragon once per turn. Does once per turn mean your turn, or can it also mean on your opponent's turn? Because it says quick effect. Correct. So you can do it once on your turn, once on your opponent's turn? Correct. This feels like a payoff. This feels like what you want to play. You feel like you do all those little hoops to get this thing out. Right? So I guess this works if you can, like, special summon all those other little dudes and then have this be your normal summon. And then have this be have this be your finisher, yeah. But uh, and I don't you know. Can... Maybe there's other cards that help you tutor it a little bit more. But I I don't know. I don't know how re how reliable is it to find this thing instead of all the one star monsters. I got to go back and look through what some of these things do because they do specifically say level, level one fire. One. A lot of stuff level lets you one get, like, level one stuff. So yeah. yeah, how do you find this guy? Besides just playing two extra copies in your deck. I don't know now. This seems good, but all of these cards have kind of seemed good to me, so that can't actually be true. Um, all right, there all might right. be one card that I just need to show you since we did read a lot of cards that mentioned Diabell Star. I got to show you okay. what they actually are talking about when it comes to Diabell Star. So, Cam, I'm going to let I, you read this I one. Need, yeah, Ooh, yeah nice. let's, we okay. need that. We get, to, well, we get to even it out. 
And now, <laughs> oh, oh Diabell Star, the Black Witch. Oh, this card looks awesome. So this is a this is a level seven, uh, Dark Magician stats with twenty five hundred attack and uh, <laughs> two thousand defense. It's a spell caster with an effect. You can special summon this card from your hand by sending one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. You can only special summon this card once per turn this way. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can set one sinful spoils spell or trap directly from your deck. During your opponent's turn, if this card is sent from the owner's hand or field to the graveyard, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. And if you do, special summon oh. this card. Wow. Oh. Holy cow. Okay. This okay. seems good. Is this good? Man, this I don't know anymore. Really good. The harpies seem bad. I'm pretty confident the harpies were not good thinking, looking back on those. Because they didn't do anything. They were just like balls of stats. And you had like powerful spells and traps. But you this can't seems actually... really good. Because these, this... these other things close the game out faster. I feel like that's what you need in Yu-Gi-Oh. You need ways to finish the game, not ways to kill your opponent's stuff as much, right? And this, this is a card you can find off of original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye, too. So I think, I think this is just like a very consistent way to finish the game with just like a huge a huge monster that is discard proof that's sweet but i still i don't know looking back at the assault blackwing this card seems nuts this card seems like it's got to be good now but man this is hard <laughs> i'm having a hard oh, i see okay the, okay this the snake eyes and the diabell star seem like they are these both seem these both seem good. These seems like good ways to to end the game. The Diabell Star one seems like it's easy to like it's hard to get rid of because it seems like you can pretty easily just special summon it back. Um, and whereas this thing, oh, let me read this again. This one is another one that's a big giant monster that's worth several creatures because it looks like you can like you're you're bringing stuff back to the trap zone. And if you're saying that there's another card that allows you to special summon these cards that you're bringing back into your trap zone as monsters, it feels like you should be able to keep your monsters full like at all times. And that means your opponents are going to have a hard time getting through and then you have these like big like hard to kill slash like I don't know like very carded like this feels like a Rhystic study almost where it just like keeps on getting more advantage over time. I think I have an idea. I, I'm gonna lock in something that I could be wrong about, but I think I have an idea. Yeah, I, the, I have. I have an idea as well, and I think it's gonna be a little bit different than Dylan's. Okay, so let's go ahead and give our final answers. I'm gonna start with you, Cam. What deck do you think was never good? I'm gonna say that the Harpy deck was never good. Even though it was an early archetype, I'm going to say Harpies were just never good and that there was always something better to do in, in Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. What deck do you think was good and is no longer good? I'm actually going to go with the, um, the Blade Wings as being the deck that used to be good and is no longer good. And the logic I'm going with is because... I don't know how new Synchro is, but I'm sure they tried to make Synchro busted when it first came out, and they would push it when it first came out to make it really good, but I think that uh, if it's been out for a while and a lot of the novelty has worn off, then it could certainly be outclassed by some other things that have come out since then. So I'm going with Blade Wing as used to be good. Okay, so that leaves you to the... Uh, Snake Eye slash Diabell Star, Simple Spoils, to be good right now. Yeah, and uh, my, a lot of my logic comes from the fact that we got a little bit more context to see what all this does, and I think there's just so many tutors that you can do to find everything you need that this seems really consistent. Um, I'm going to say that the Snake Eye deck is good. Okay, Dylan, what deck do you think yeah. <clears throat> was never good? So... Yes, uh, I'm going to agree with Cameron on some of these, but I think the Harpy deck was never good. I think um, I'm nostalgic for it because when I was young, it seemed very out of my reach, but I think that these cards probably are overall not good. I think I agree with Cameron that there was probably just something better to do, and I think in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's probably better to just like be 
um, like offensive rather than defensive. Harpy Lady seems like it's really good at like maybe like controlling the board and getting rid of things quickly. But if you don't have like a good way to finish the game, which I didn't, I don't know if I really saw that out of the Harpies, it's probably not good. So I'm going to say the Harpies were never good. Okay, next up, what do, what do you think? Well, are you going to agree with Cam on everything or do you, are you going to switch it up with the next two? I, th- I have to agree with Cam, although I'm going to... I'm kind of kicking myself. The main reason why I am agreeing with Cam uh, is that I think the Black Wings used to be good, but it seems like you maybe have to put all of your eggs in this one 6,000 attack basket, and then maybe that's not so good anymore. Whereas the Snake Eyes, it seems like there's a lot of card advantage stapled onto them. One card equals like four other cards. And I think in Yu-Gi-Oh! Since like Pot of Greed is banned, I think card advantage is really, really important. So any cards that are worth more than just the card that themselves, to me, that seems like it's really good. So being able to chain several things together uh, in one turn and then ending on either the, the big giant dragon that can return more creatures to your graveyard, to your play, or the Diabella that seems like kind of hard to actually kill. Those seems like really good finishers to me, whereas like, and they're a little bit more um, spread out, I, I suppose. So yeah, I, I think the Snake Eyes are good now, and I think the uh, Black Wings used to be good, but not anymore. Okay, so the, the Black Whirlwind card advantage situation was not as much card advantage as you were looking for, and you think that the Diabell Star deck and the Snake Eye deck can get more card advantage than like normal summoning more than once per turn with a Black Whirlwind in play. That's my, I think overall that is, that's how I'm choosing to evaluate. Yes, card advantage has got to be important. I think that's the strongest thing. Okay, you're both right. And you're both we did it! wrong. Oh, shit, oh. what does that mean? <laughs> I'm trolling you. You're both all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Great. Yes. Um, Harpy Lady was nice. never good. Um, if it had gotten the, like, uh, the some of the Harpy cards that I gave you were, like, retrained to be, like, better Harpy cards over time. But if, and if those Harpy cards were printed, like, all the way back then, like, yeah, Harpy Lady would have been good at one point. But Harpy's Feather Duster was banned for a very, very long time, and it was recently, like, oh, semi-recently okay. unbanned. It's now, now mm. you can only play one of it, like, like it's vintage or something. You can only play one Harpy's yeah. Feather Duster. Um, and also, the trap card is competitively playable. Like, it's playable right it now. Is? Okay. Like, there's, it, it requires a, wi- uh, a Wind Wing Beast, right? Um, and there's a lot of Wind, wind, um, like wind Wing Beast monsters that you can play that aren't Harpies, because it doesn't say Harpy. It, it says, like, Wind Wing Beast monsters. Right. Wind, so yeah. So other people have like tr- have played this card in their deck that has wind wind wing beast in it, uh, and and use it to shut off your opponent's monster effects, which is very useful and competitively playable card. Um, the okay. problem with harpies is that you were right. There's no like real broken boss monster like uh, harpy card to like consistently finish off the game, and it's not as consistent to start up in the first place. Unlike the sinful spoils deck, mm-hmm. which is one of the most consistent decks like ever printed yeah that's oh, all right it, it's like got it. a bit yeah every single thing is a tutor for four other things yeah, yeah it's, it's like the popular card it was a a new card printed into the an already good deck and the popular card just made it go over the top really good um mm, you add yeah. you play a card to add a level one fire oh i add popular oh it triggers special someone out of your hand when popular's summoned Oh, trigger, search a card. Like, it's like level one fire, level yeah. one fire, level one fire, level one fire. And then you get to the Sinful Spoils cards that you can uh, that you can get the Day of Star stuff and then keep going. And then you get the Flame Burge and the Flame Burge goes to the graveyard to bring both level ones back. And there's even a good level one that I didn't even show you. Like, there's there's other cards that are good that you would play in the deck that I didn't show you, too. So, and the Field Spell that is you could have like, read, like, uh, there's, a, there's a lot. Is this there's like a, lot a fast of deck? Like, what does this deck look like? Are you, like, getting, like, five monsters out on turn one, and then by turn two you have the thing out? Like, what, like, what turn does this deck win on normally? Um, it can play a really good grind game, and if, you, if, it, and if, it, goes un, if it goes unanswered, um, if your opponent doesn't have, like, a force of will for what you're doing or whatever, then you can win on turn one of the game, like, when you're going second. You can't attack okay. on your first turn, oh, wow. um, so okay. you would just set up a board that, um, that you... That you can't really die if they pressure you and then you kill them on the follow-up turn is there like are people like clamoring for this deck to be banned right now or is this like is it okay this is like this is like one of the best decks this is like one of the best decks that you can be playing right now obviously there's like a, lot, a few other decks that you can play that are like tier one but this is one of the best if not the best deck in the format 
but no one wants, does anyone want something to be banned from this? Like are people, is the YouTube community, like, do they think this is too far? Or like, this is accepted as just what good YouTube decks look like or good Yu-Gi-Oh decks look like. I don't, I don't think anything should really be banned from this. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you okay. could, you I'm sure you could have other people having opinions that like this could be banned, but, um, like, this is as interactive as it gets, basically. Like, this isn't doing something inherently overpowered, like putting your opponent's life points to zero in the start of the game or whatever. Like, there are decks that can do that, and those mm. cards are banned. Like, this, is, this isn't Got like it, drawing okay. your whole deck and, and, and showing them five pieces of Exodia. You know, you're not actually winning the game, right? Your opponent can interact with you. Uh, so you you were all right, which is awesome. Congratulations for for getting all of them right. Your card Excellent. evaluation, Magic the Gathering, co competitive ED8 skills coming in <laughs> handy. Um, also, if you guys want to come back on the show at some point and do some something else or whatever, you show me you CEDH cards, and I have to see whether they're whether they're good or bad. I mean, I play CEDH myself, so I would know a lot of them. But you can show me like fringe cards or whatever. Uh, I would be happy to do that video as well. But you guys were awesome guests. You kept it lively. You're you're very smart. You kept your your you, you, you showed me all of your ideas, which was exactly what we're looking for. So that was awesome. Excellent. Thank you very oh, yeah. much for coming on the show. Thanks. And if you at home watching this do want to come on your show yourself, that is an option. You can join the Patreon. And if you join the Patreon at, at a specific tier, you can be on the show as well. Anyway, thank you for hanging out. We'll see you next time. And as always, peace.